Hey everyone, welcome to episode 26. In this one, we'll be looking at rations, Vietnam era MCI rations, and I'll be scratch building a ration can or two. Now you'll recall that in the previous video, we finished, basically finished the interior of the M113. The radio has been added, the sandbags, most of the uh, interior weathering has been done. But before I can uh, seal this up, I need to add a few more things to the inside. Now during the Vietnam War, the troops ate sea rations. Unlike today's modern rations, these were all canned. Different cans in different sizes and they contained biscuits and such gastronomic delights such as chopped ham and eggs. And if you read the Vietnam books, the, uh, the veterans will tell you that some of this stuff was absolutely horrible. But before I get to that, a word from my sponsor. That's right folks, this build is sponsored by Zululand Hobbies. If you're in South Africa, check out their website. They told me that they are expecting a huge shipment of very exciting stock soon. All your favorite brands, Academy, Evergreen, ICM and Zvezda. So do check out their website, zululandhobbies.co.za, if you are in South Africa. So let's get started. I'll be using two uh, carton or paper kits for these accessories. The one is from Dio Art, and this includes uh, beer can cartons, Budweiser and Black Label. But the one that I'll be dealing with in this tutorial is from Tamiya. That is the uh, Tamiya MCI ration cartons in 135 scale. I'm a big fan of anything Tamiya and uh, these cartons are really next level. It's a very creative um, little system, different size boxes, even down to the individual uh, smaller cartons that carry the cans. A word about the tools, we'll be cutting paper so you'll need a sharp pair of scissors. I also find that for precision cutting and especially metal cutting, these modeling scissors for photo etched parts works very well. I'll also be using the uh, reverse action tweezers from Tamiya just to hold some of the really small parts. And then finally a set of uh, pliers uh, just to help us fold paper. We'll need to glue paper and for that I'll be using ultra glue from Ammo Mic. This stuff dries completely clear and it works very well for this application. To apply the glue I'll be using a uh, toothpick and this is the ordinary grocery store variety toothpick. To use these boxes, um, you'll need to cut them from the paper where all the lines are indicated. And uh, to make precision folds, I like to use these, uh, these pliers. Basically just fold on all the, uh, all the lines as indicated. It takes a while, but uh, I quite enjoy folding these little boxes. Tamiya really excels at uh, these little ration cartons. They've got one for the modern MREs, this one for canned rations, and then of course also the World War II rations. All, uh, all the boxes, such nice accessories for your 135 scale models. Glue is applied with the, uh, with the toothpick. This box will be closed, so I don't need to be too careful in the way I apply the glue, just as long as I don't get any on the outside. There we go, this is the inner box. These boxes had an outer sleeve and that's also provided on the, uh, on the paper sheet by Tamiya. And this is carefully cut from, uh, from the sheet and folded. Tamiya also included these, uh, these inserts for the individual cartons that carry the cans. This was also cut from the sheet and uh, folded, similar to the other, to the other box parts. And uh, when done, this fits perfectly into the, uh, to the larger box. So you can have open and closed boxes in your diorama. That's an excellent little piece right there. Loving the detail. The individual cans were 
packed into smaller cartons. These are provided as well. And sorry guys, this is so small and so difficult to film that uh, I can only show you the final result. You do need tweezers and of course a magnifier for this, but it allows you options to make closed or open boxes. I also modified one of the inserts to look as though some of the smaller boxes were taken out. And there we go, that's the boxes provided by Tamiya. It certainly adds a very nice level of detail. Now with these nice boxes, it would be sad not to have the actual cans and uh, the whole system relied on cans for the different uh, foodstuffs and uh, troops also heated their rations inside the can uh, over an open flame. To make the cans, I used some uh, styrene rod from uh, Evergreen. This is the 1.6 millimeter rod and uh, conveniently this stuff fits perfectly into the little uh, ration carton which you'll see right there. Two sets of cans right next to each other similar to the reference picks. All I need to do is to cut the, uh, the long rod into let's call it smaller pellets. I cut them a bit, bit longer than usual as I'll be using a uh, sander later to sand the, these down to the uh, to the correct size. This is where the reverse action tweezers come in. They hold this in place and uh, I can now use a, uh, a medium grit sander just to sand the edges flat and uh, get a can that is the correct size. Now these are very small parts to handle and uh, I've developed a little system that works very well to do this. You'll need a ice cream stick and some double-sided tape. Important, use double-sided tape that will not leave any sticky residue on the parts. You might have to experiment. Some of the, uh, the cheap and nasty ones do leave some glue on the, on the parts. This doesn't. And uh, basically, once this is on the stick and you pull away the backing, you've got a very convenient way of holding uh, small parts in place so that you can paint and detail them. I now place these cans on the, on the adhesive and they are ready for spraying. Always make one or two extra uh, just in case I lose one or I need to repaint one. So that will be our cans. Now to do an open can I'll need actual metal and for this I'm using uh, this aluminium food tray or baking tray. Uh, these are cheap, they are readily available at most grocery stores and uh, the metal is very easy to work with. I cut a small strip and uh, just to get rid of the burrs and rough edges, I uh, pull this through some sandpaper just to get a smooth surface. To get the, uh, the rounded can shape, I roll this around one of the uh, pieces of styrene rod, just so it's a similar, similar size to the other cans. There we go. And uh, use a tiny little bit of uh, ultra glue just to glue it in place so it doesn't uh, unwrap itself. You might need to use your tweezers just to uh, squeeze everything into, into place. And there we go, that's the, uh, the can. And just cut away that uh, piece of excess metal there. To make the lid, I'm also using the same metal. And now I'm using the photo edge tweezers. Uh, just to uh, cut this uh, to size. Again, this is extremely small, so you might have to hold on to the lid with a, uh, with a pair of tweezers. Doesn't matter if the edges are a bit rough. Remember, these were opened with uh, can openers, handheld can openers. And there we go. That's the result. I'm certainly happy with that. These cans were painted olive drab green, but of course, the inside of the can will still have a metal color, and that's why I'm putting it uh, on this uh, toothpick, just so the inside will not get painted. Next we need to paint these cans. I'm going to use Olive Drab Primer, give it a good shake, and this is now applied with the airbrush on the uh, different cans. Both the closed ones as well as the open can. There you can see paint on the outside and the interior is still metal color, just as a real can. I'm certainly happy with this. A super small little part, don't worry. I did actually manage to find it again. The next step is to do the labeling on the real cans. You'll see there was these, these labels printed on the outside. For this I'm going to use NATO Black. 
I'm again going to use my Mr. Hobby uh, detail brush just to paint on these lines of lettering. Of course, magnifiers are essential for this. To give these cans a little bit of a metallic look, I'm going to dry brush aluminium onto the edges using my Ammo Mic dry brush brush and uh, following the dry brushing procedure that I've uh, explained and demonstrated in quite a few videos. The aluminium is only uh, applied to the outside edges just to give it that typical uh, metallic look. You'll notice that our can doesn't have a uh, closed lid on the other side and we'll be fixing that next. So I'll also place this on uh, some double sided tape just to make it easier to handle. There's our little can. I decided to fill the can with some, uh, some canned peaches. That was one of the popular items for the troops. For this I'm using sunny skin tone as well as uh, Vallejo snow just to add some, some texture. This is mixed together and then carefully inserted into the can uh, with a toothpick. There's the end result. I'm certainly over the moon with this, this result looking very good. Now these cans were packed into boxes and that's the next step. First I put some ultra glue into the box with a toothpick and then carefully position the cans inside. There we go, folks. Meal combat individual in 135 scale. This is the final result, a variety of different sea ration items ready for our diorama. And this will uh, add a fantastic little bit of detail to the interior of the uh, M113. This is a list of all the colors that I use, as well as some of the tools and there you'll see the carton kits that I used. Guys, if you're curious to follow the rest of the build, please join me on Instagram. Uh, I do regular updates there, and uh, looking forward to seeing everyone in video 27.